Greetings, and welcome to my dining room. Uh, why are we in here? Well, uh, uh, <laughs> well, Alright, so what I have here is a huge collection of Apple II computers and this isn't even all of it. I've got tons more games, software, accessories, hardware, parts, tons of stuff. If I put out all the disk drives, um, I would need another table just by itself for those. But yeah, and how I came to acquire all this stuff is I joined a regional Facebook group for retro computer collectors just around my state and this guy posted a thread saying that he was retiring, moving, wanted to downsize his collection, just keep a few things and get rid of everything else. And the first person to comment on the thread would get the whole lot. As long as they agreed, they definitely would be there because he needed it gone. And as luck would have it, that ended up being me. So I contacted the guy and I drove up to Jacksonville, Florida and picked up everything. And I met the dude, his name was David, really cool guy, still amazed by his generosity, just letting me have all this stuff for free. He just wanted it to go to a good home and I definitely appreciate having it. And it was so much stuff, I completely filled my SUV. Um, I thought it'd be like pretty full, but no, it was like top to bottom, back, back seats, even stuff in the front seat. It was a very rattly four hours back home. But yeah, here's some of what I managed to get. First off, I have two Apple IIc systems. Uh, this monitor works, this one does not. This one has a custom ROM installed that has its own like operating system. Um, yeah, they work great, start right up. PC speaker is incredibly loud on these, especially this one. Um, yeah. Then next I have three Apple IIe systems. This one has a RAM upgrade and some extra audio functionality I haven't really messed with yet. There's like another jack for like a eighth inch speaker cable coming out. And this one is mostly stock. Um, the only expansion in there is uh, two I added from the parts box, the 80 column card, and a five and a quarter inch disc controller. And this one is kind of the showpiece of all of these. Um, it has so many expansions and upgrades. I don't even know what all of them do yet, but the most impressive one to me is this. Um, this is a controller for the Fast Chip 2E. Uh, Basically, it, you can use this knob to speed up the clock speed of the CPU from 1 megahertz to 16 megahertz. Uh, it does that by adding on like a 65C16 to a, like a little riser daughter board thing. And you can do it in real time as well as like freeze the CPU cycles, switch to the normal 1 megahertz 6502 stuff like that and yeah there's also multiple RAM expansions um, this other little thing coming out of here still have not figured it out yet he tried to explain it to me but I need to read the manual something involving like storing data in ROM or no, 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 in like RAM memory and then I don't know being able to like dump it to printer or something like that. I don't know. Uh, crazy, crazy nerdy stuff. Uh, super impressive. This, this thing is loaded on the inside. I'll take the cover off and we'll take a look. And then I have three Apple IIgs systems. One of these, the CPU was sacrificed for the fast chip 2e board on that computer. So one of these doesn't work. This one is mostly stock. And this is the guy's main one. 
It has uh, eight megabytes of RAM, if I recall correctly. Uh, a CF card storage acting as a hard drive. And this thing, the fingerprint, uh, which if you touch it, it'll like dump everything on screen to a printer. And yeah, this thing's super cool, super clean. It's like barely yellowed at all. And yeah, I've been using it with this Kensington ADB trackball, which is super nice. And I've got a bunch of ADB keyboards, just tons of stuff. Um, yeah. And the systems themselves all work except for this one, which did work before the CPU was taken out of it. Um, the only things that don't work are this monitor and this monitor. This is an Apple Color 2 monitor. Um, I need to find a TV repair shop that still does CRTs so I can get both of these up and running. Because this would be super, super cool to use. And this would just be handy to have. And I love these monitors. Super sharp green monochrome phosphor display. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, up first is this Apple IIc. Um, this one is very nicely taken care of, barely yellowed at all, and keyboard feels nice and a little bit of a click to it. But yeah, let's fire her up. And I've got just the game. We've got Frogger. Um, I like this version because I can redefine the keys. <laughs> so. Super loud speaker on this thing. It actually has a volume wheel over to the left. Which is nice because it's like echoing through the room. What the hell? <laughs> okay. staring at the screen from a weird angle. Oh, well, I'm not doing so hot today, but in fact, I better stop now or else I'm just going to be doing this all day. But yeah, I love this monitor. It's super sharp. Um, love this green monochrome and more than that I just, I just I love the aesthetic of this thing it's so nice and friendly looking and yeah it just looks great definitely better in person than on camera but still yeah so I'm not gonna look at my other 2c because it's basically the same thing but yeah Okay, I know just a second ago I said I wasn't going to take a look at the other one, but it's actually just sitting right over there, so why not? As you can see, it's a little bit more yellowed, especially on the space bar here. But other than that, it's in good condition and works just fine, same as the other one, really. And I've got this lovely joystick here. Of course. We can play some uh, Sky Fox. This is a copy, but I do have the, uh, the release in the EA LP style sleeve.
this launch. I'm ready. I'm not great at this game though, but I enjoy it all the same. Nice crunchy PC speaker sounds. Uh, where the hell am I going? This is one I would rather be playing in color, to be honest. But <laughs> okay, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But yeah. Oh wow, here's some activity. <laughs> they sneak up on you. Where'd you go? Well, apparently I am a dumbass. But yeah, you get the idea. But yeah, this thing's awesome. These were actually my go-to for a while when I first got all these machines, because uh, I just didn't have enough desk space for them. And the 2C can fit perfectly, monitor and all, on my nightstand. <laughs> so I just had it set up there, and uh, I don't know, on a whim I'd fire it up and play some Frogger. And yeah, these are just awesome little machines. Very compact, not a lot to set up. This drive just built right in. Yeah, these are awesome. Okay, so you've seen this on the intro, all my videos so far. This is my main Apple IIe. Um, it has the fast chip add-on and a bunch of other stuff. I've got the uh, A2M 2010 green monochrome monitor here, which I like a lot, it's super sharp. Got some newer five and a quarter inch disk drives. And yeah, let's take a look at it. I like this little splash screen for the fast chip. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward from here. Honestly, it works the same as the 2C for the most part. You can uh, run the greatest program of all time. Uh, it never gets old. And uh, it's got this, it won't make a huge difference on this, but you know, slow down the clock speed, even to speeds under what it would normally be. You can see the flashing there slightly. But yeah, let's get out of this. And you know what, I'll just throw in some Frogger again because I just know what it plays like on these. Spot the problem here. Yeah, so with this, uh, some games run way too fast, but all you gotta do is just, you know, hit this button over here, and yeah, I'm not paying attention, but uh, hit this button over here and it'll just switch to the stock one megahertz, or you can do it yourself. You can even uh, slow it down more if you so desire, but. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Every time. Those damn turtles. Come on, give me a log. Oh, shit. So, yeah. Well, uh crack this open and take a look at the inside because there's quite a lot going on here okay so we got her open um, god there's a lot going on in here uh, first is this applied engineering RAM works 2 which is a RAM expansion and then mounted on top of that is this uh, A2 Heaven uh, VGA extension for this card so it actually adds a VGA connector to it and I haven't tried that out yet. And then down below it here, we've got the uh, SD music card, which is really interesting. I haven't really messed with it yet. Um, it adds FM synthesis to the system. 
uh, via the YM2413 chip. It has a speaker out jack right here. And yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if it's a clone or what of the old uh, Mockingboard card. And yeah, some games use that. And I have one of the games that uses it, uh, or one of the games I know uses it, uh, Ultima 5. So I'll have to give that a shot soon. But yeah, directly next to that is the Echo 2, which is a speech synthesis card. Next to that is the uh, Disk Drive controller. And then down here is the real star of the show, the Fast Chip 2E, also from A2 Heaven. And here's a little breakout controller for that. Uh, it's just going out one of the uh, empty ports in the back. And yeah, I've already explained what that does, but... Then we've got this, the Senior Prom. Uh, in the intro, I did a very poor job explaining what that did because I don't, I didn't fully understand what it did. Uh, the guy I got this from tried to explain it to me, but it was way over my head. Um, I have since looked it up and it does a variety of things. Um, a lot of people used it for breaking copy protection on software. Others have used it to just like, save kind of like save states in a game um chris torrance at the assembly lines podcast has a video that uh does an excellent job of explaining and showing what it does way better than i could but yeah it basically just shifts things around uh from memory and lets you recall them uh enter the system monitor all sorts of things and that goes out to this uh little breakout panel here and yeah, it has a wire that goes to one of the pins on the CPU. And it replaces the stock ROMs. I guess it can act as uh, like an interrupt between the system and the ROMs. Ah, I don't know. Something like that is way over my head. Uh, not the kind of thing I would normally use. But it's definitely cool. Uh, the things people have been able to do with these computers are just mind-blowing. But yeah... It's, uh, it's super neat, and this is just an amazing system. Um, I can't take credit for it. Like, uh, Dave, who I got all this stuff from, he's, just, I don't know, he's just a cool dude and a true, a true Apple II geek. Um, he put together such a crazy combination of things here, and this isn't even the only one. This is just the most fully loaded. Like, this was his main Apple II. And now it's mine as well. Um, it's one of my go-tos. But yeah, this is just really awesome stuff here. Uh, I've only scratched the surface of what the system is capable of. Um, definitely going to check out this uh, FM synthesis card. Okay. This is the next Apple IIe out of the three that I have. And this one actually didn't have any expansions installed. Uh, nothing at all. Um, completely blank slate. Yeah, it's got this uh, computer craft badge on it. But yeah, I actually kind of like that, having a blank slate to do whatever I want with out of the tons and tons of parts I got sitting around. So let's take a look at that. I love how easy this is to open and get to. God, Apple's having uh, easy user access to the internals and, uh, you know, plenty of expansion slots. I really hope that sticks around. But, yeah, here's the inside. Let's turn it around for a better look. So, yeah, as you can see, there's really not much going on here. Um, just the Disk 2 interface card and the 80 column card. And that's really about it. Um, yeah, it's kind of nice to have a... Uh, a blank slate to do whatever with. I mean, all the expansions on the, the other ones I have aren't impeding anything I'm trying to do, but it's kind of nice that I can, I don't know, start fresh with one that's been mostly untouched. And yeah, it works the same as all the other ones. It works fine. Um, starts right up. Not really sure where I'm going to go from here in terms of uh, what, to, what kind of junk to fill this with, but if I do... I'm sure that will be revisited in a future video. So yeah, there's really not that much to show with this one, but yeah, it's nice. And closing her up is nice and simple too. Okay. 
And on to my third and final Apple IIe. Um, this one might be the craziest one yet, but I guess in a more subtle way. There's less things dangling out of the side. Yeah, the only uh, external weirdness going on is this 8th-inch uh, uh, audio jack coming out of the back. But yeah, this one's a nice shape too. They all are. I mean, these were well kept. But let's crack this one open and take a look. What a lovely assortment of cards here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's quite a bit going on. Um, the RAM works, you know, I had that in my other one, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is interesting, mostly because I couldn't find much info on it. Um, I was able to s find some, but there's not much documentation of this. This is the Slotbuster 2 multifunction card, and it does a few things. Um, it's actually what this 8th uh, inch audio out jack is going to. Uh, it can act as a serial interface, whatever, but one of the big attractions here is it does some sort of a speech synthesis stuff. And yeah, I'm really curious about that. I have not dabbled much in, uh, in that sort of thing. And next to that, we've got an Applied Engineering Transwarp uh, Accelerator card. You know, pretty self-explanatory there. Apple Mouse Interface. And this, this is interesting. Um, this is by the same guy who made the SD music card in my first Apple IIe. Yeah, Ian Kim from South Korea. This is his clone of the Microsoft uh, Z80 soft card. This is his CPM Turbo 7. It basically adds a Zilog Z80 coprocessor to the system. And it can run in normal or fast mode fast mode being uh, 7 megahertz, although in the Apple IIe, uh, I think it only runs like 1.6 times uh, as fast as normal. But yeah, it lets you run CPM, Microsoft Basic, you know, stuff like this was a big deal back in the day if, you know, you wanted to run business software. Next to that is another disk drive controller. And then this, because the RAM expansions just never end, this is A2 Heaven's RF8M. It's an 8 megabyte memory expansion uh, with a battery backup, um, CR2032, and yeah, 8 megs of uh, SRAM. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff in here. Definitely going to be revisiting uh, these two for a future video at some point. But yeah, this thing's just... This thing's awesome. You know, a lot of this kind of stuff isn't something I personally would uh, would pick up, but I respect the hell out of the fact that it's in here. Now this, this is such a lovely machine. The Apple II GS, GS standing for graphics and sound. You know, for the time this came out, this is really impressive to me. Um, using it, you just don't even feel like you're using that old of a computer. I mean, you do, obviously, but I don't know, like, if you don't know a single basic command or anything, you can fire this up and just feel right at home. Um, especially if you've used, you know, later Macintoshes, or later than this, you know. And it's a shame to think that, you know, they intentionally limited some of the potential of this. Not marketing it that well, limiting the CPU to 2.8 megahertz, stuff like that, to focus on the Macintosh line. Yeah, this thing is so cool. I mean, the graphics are awesome. The sound is awesome. Uh, the sound is provided by the Insonic 5503 chip, uh, designed by Bob Yanis, same guy who did the Commodore 64 SID chip. And it was also used in a few Insonic synths from back in the day. But yeah, let's fire it up. You can see I've got the uh, big mess of wires floppy emu plugged in. See that lighting up? Nice SD card floppy emulator. Very handy. It works on all these, but uh, I've just got it set up with this. Since I don't have as much 2GS specific software. Yeah, everything's starting up. Got a few windows open. Close those. Yeah, this particular one has a CF card installed on an expansion card 
acting as a hard drive. So you can see some of those folders here. MD Volume 4, you know, a few things here. There's only one thing in here. But yeah, there's a ton of stuff installed on here already. Yeah, just it looks great. Uh, you will notice my monitor is uh, missing some chunks. That happened before I got it. Um, the previous owner, he told me that he had this shipped to him. And the guy didn't pack it right. Ain't that the way. But yeah, I've got this uh, Kensington ADB trackball plugged in just because I don't have a lot of space right here. And the ADB keyboard. I've got a few of those in a box. Yeah, let's get in closer and play a game. I'm going to do some uh, Arkanoid 2 because I like it. Probably going to be terrible at it. The, this trackball does not feel that great for this game. And I've got a camera in my face. Ah, I'm doing great as you can see. It's <sighs> about how it goes. I need to hook up a mouse. This trackball, there might be something up with it. Maybe I just need to clean it out or something, but moving side to side on the ball over here. Um Yeah, it's it just feels a little funky, but it's fine. Oh wow, it saved, uh, <laughs> I think it saved one of my games on here. Well, I didn't make this video to wow you with my Arkanoid skills. Yeah, I need to get a mouse or a joystick or something, but you get the idea. And I love this game. I love the sound that comes from this, even if it's a little bit quiet. I need to hook up some speakers, but eh. But, yeah. What else do I have? I've got other things on here. Alright, we've got pirates. Ah yes, listen to that wavetable synthesis. Yeah, let's select a historical period, I guess. Pirate Sunset. Sounds romantic. I like it. I I don't really know what this game is. <laughs> yeah, I'll be an English pirate. Okay. Skill at fencing. That sounds fun. Okay. When does the silver train arrive at Panama in 18 or 1680, Mr. Farts? <laughs> I don't know. August. Why not? Well, late in the month. What? I was right. Uh, that's probably just right no matter what I select, I guess. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I don't know what's going on. I don't have the manual.
Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna stop playing this for now for this video, but I'm definitely gonna come back to this outside the video because I'm curious. This is just a uh, disc image that I had on here. Um, don't really know that much about it. I tried test drive two, that didn't work. So, whatever. But, let's take a look inside this thing and see what's going on. Let's get this out onto a disc. Nice. Okay, I took the top off, off camera, because on the 2GS it's much more of a hassle, and I'm not even going to open up my other machines, because A, there's really nothing exciting going on in those, and B, these uh, plastic tabs you push in to open it up, um, I don't think the mechanism is as robust. So, and on my other machines, uh, the plastic is a lot more brittle. Some of them have yellowed. So, like, one of them is already broken when I got it, so I don't want to risk that. I try and open these as little as possible. But, yeah, so here it is. And let's take a look at what we got inside. Okay, so yeah, I've got the power supply here. And this is a DVI monitor output. It's been added, obviously not stock. And what this ribbon cable actually plugs into is somewhat hidden under the power supply, so I'm not gonna show that, but yeah, it's pretty much what you would assume it is. You know, lets you hook up a DVI monitor if you want. Okay, so this card here is the Fingerprint GSI. And it goes to this little ribbon cable and comes out to this, which kind of sits right here when the case is closed. And it's a screen dumping utility. So you touch this, and basically it'll dump whatever is on screen to a printer, and you can just print it out. So 1986's version of a screenshot. So that's pretty cool. I do have some printers. I'll test that out eventually, just for the hell of it. But yeah, next to that is another Echo 2 speech synthesis card. This is my favorite thing in here. This is basically an adapter that lets you use a CF card as an internal drive. It's extremely handy. Um, when I got it, there was already a ton of software already installed. So, yeah, I've added a few things, but yeah, for the most part, a lot of the stuff I'd actually want to use was already on there. You know, paint programs, some games, music stuff, you know, whatever. And this blue card down here is a 4 megabyte RAM expansion. Yeah, the Byte Boosters RAM 4 megabyte XLP. Eh, not much to it. So, yeah, that's super handy, especially if you're wanting to use like GSOS or whatever, which I do. So, yeah, it's the inside of this one. Nothing too crazy going on, not like some of the 2Es I have, but everything that's in here is pretty useful. Well, I mean, this isn't really that useful to me, but it's still cool. Um, the guy I got it from, he explained what it did, and I was like, what? <laughs> like, okay, like, surely, surely I misunderstood something, but no, it, it does exactly what he said it does. It just touch it and go to a printer. So get some nice 1980s screenshots going on. So yeah, this is such a cool system. I, I really love this. So, yeah. Alright, let's take a look at some box games. First off, I got a bunch of old Avalon Hill games. Got this B1 Nuclear Bomber. And... God, this thing's old. This is actually on cassette tape. And there's versions for multiple systems. You got, you know, the Atari 8-bit... Commodore Pet, TRS-80, but yeah, a few of these are on cassette. And then somehow I've ended up with two sealed copies of this one, Close Assault, and yeah, they're both still sealed. And these boxes are gigantic. I actually can't fit them on my normal shelf. Uh, they're sitting on top of the bookshelf, just kind of watching down on me. And yeah, another cassette. Then I've got this one. Conflict 2500. A simulation of conflict in the 26th century. Yeah. 
This looks neat. Dreadnoughts. It requires 48K. Well, I hope I can meet it. Yeah, and this one is on floppy disk. It comes on a five and a quarter inch. You see, we've got some uh, screenshots here. World War I battle cruiser and World War II surface battles in the Atlantic. Yeah. Uh, this is not Avalon Hill, this is a SSI, but yeah, you can see some screens here. These SSI boxes are gigantic as well. Computer Ambush. <laughs> I love that name. Yeah, another 48K. Also on floppy disks. Oop, upside down. The Sweat and Death of War. <laughs> Warship. A lot of war games, a lot, a lot of grandpa games. And we've got Legionnaire, another Avalon Hill. I love this artwork. <laughs> There's so much going on. And then Ralph Bossen's Under Fire. More war strategy games. System requirements. One disk drive, thank gosh. Ooh, hey, this supports the uh, Mockingboard thing, so I can use it with that uh, SD music card. Nice. And the final one. Warp Factor. You know, this doesn't say, doesn't have any branding of any uh, large science fiction franchises, but I wonder if it's inspired by one. Hmm. This one looks tight. Um, yeah. I'm definitely going to fire this one up soon. Actually, I did put the disc in um, to see if it worked and whatnot, and it does. So most of these discs I have actually work, surprisingly. I've only ran into a few that wouldn't read. Okay, now for some non-gigantic Avalon Hill stuff. Got some neat stuff in here. This is actually not an Apple II game, uh, not this particular one. This is the Macintosh game, but uh, yeah, Ancient Art of War by Broderbund. Um, God, this thing is huge. I mean, look at this documentation. This game is one thick bit. So anyway, yeah, it comes on three and a half inch floppies, but yeah, this is cool. If I get an old Macintosh going, Definitely gonna give this a try. I've heard good things about these games, especially uh, Ancient Art of War at Sea. Then we've got Crush, Crumble, and Chomp, the movie monster game. Yeah. Ooh, Apple and Atari use high resolution color. You are the villain, okay. Interesting. Well, this might be getting a video soon. I'm curious about it. Another Grandpa War Game. Empire. War Game of the Century. It you know, requires 128K of RAM, joystick. This one I'm super hyped on. I've, I love these, and for a long time I didn't even know that they started on the Apple II. Flight Simulator 2 by Sublogic. Um, this thing is in great shape. Like, it looks like it just came out of the store today. But, yeah. I've tried playing it, but this is one of those where it's like, you really need to read the manual, at least somewhat. But... Yeah, mm. flight simulator. This is very tight. 
we've got an origin game here that I've never heard of. Ogre. Yeah, I don't know. Based on the Ogre board game by Steve Jackson. Looks like another strategy type game, but this looks cool. A cybernetic tank. Hell yeah. More origin. And this one is freaking heavy. Omega. I love this box art. Oh my gosh. These like wireframe illustrations and this the lightning and oh this is cool as hell. And yes, this thing is seriously heavy. Cyber Tank Engineer's Handbook. Gosh, how many pages is this? Uh, they're not like numbered sequentially, but yeah, this is a this seems like a beast of a game. Then we've got a smaller box SSI game, Panzer Strike. Oh yeah, that looks cool. You know these these types of games like I've tried a few of them. And there's something I want to get into, but it's, they're just so, like, there's so much. Just, like, you need to read the manual for them. But this looks cool. Rendezvous, a space shuttle flight simulation by Eduware. No screenshots. <laughs> With these games I've tried out so far, which is a couple of them, uh, if there's no screenshots... That's usually a sign of things to come. Get in there. This box is a little bit worn out. But, yeah. Sargon 3. The ultimate in computer chess. Yeah. Now this is up my alley. This looks tight. Hmm. Starfleet 1 by Interstell. This artwork is just gorgeous. My gosh. I mean, let's just look at this. This is so tight. And yeah, we've got some screenshots here, or a screenshot of the IBM version. But yeah, this thing's heavy as hell too. What's inside? Okay. Officer's manual. Officer's Manual Supplement, Training Manual, oh my gosh. There's just so much going on with some of these. With a lot of these, you really need to read them. Sub Battle Simulator by Epix. Okay, this looks tight. This looks cool. Hmm. That's pretty light. Got anything in here? Yeah, just floppies and manuals. And there's some more of these war games. Here's uh, Russia, The Great War in the East, 1941 to 1945, by Roger Keating and Ian Trout. And look at this. Got like terrain maps and all these photos. Oh, this is cool. No screech on to the back. Yeah, this is like kind of a sleeve kind of thing, but all these that I have are a little bit crunched, but not too bad. And then Battlefront, also by Roger Keating and Ian Trout. Core level command in World War II. This one's got some screenshots. Yeah. And got a thicker one here. Halls of Montezuma, a battle history of the United States Marine Corps. Uh, again, Roger Keating and Ian Trout and some other people. 64K Apple II. Ooh, we got a photo of the developers here. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, this is gigantic. 
Oh, Jesus. Yeah, these are so involved. Like, even if these aren't really my thing, I still appreciate, like, there's obviously a lot of, uh, I don't know, just a lot of, like, love and care went into these sort of things, like, oh. And these I'm really excited about. Oh. Kind of hard to see on camera, but wizardry. Proving grounds of the mad overlord. Oh my gosh, this box is so classy. And also, this is just such an important game. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, oh man. I'm really excited to try this out. Got a bunch of discs. We got... Backup. Scenario. Yeah. Fairly thick manual. Some more documentation. Yeah. But, but it doesn't end there because I've also got the third one here in this nice classy embossed gold and navy blue box. And also, got this tiny little sleeve that's, uh, yeah, the second scenario. Yeah. Ah, these are cool. These are worthy of a video by themselves for sure. Then, a few non-Apple II games got mixed in here. Um, this is actually an Amiga game, but it's another Roger Keating and Ian Trout game. Reach for the Stars, The Conquest of the Galaxy. And yeah, it requires an Amiga with 512K RAM. And it's on one three and a half inch floppy. Yeah. And then the final one of these in a box. Oh, I'm excited for this. Oh yeah. I honestly didn't expect to own any of these. Um, Jesus Christ. I mean, what really needs to be said about these games in this series? Yeah, I've got the Book of Lore and what everyone's going to wonder about. Yes, it has the cloth map. God, this is so cool. When I saw this, my heart skipped a beat a little bit. I'm gonna play this soon, but it's one of those things where it's like, when I finally do, I wanna really set aside some time for it. Oh, this is so tight. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And then there's this, there's actually one more, but it's like super crunched, but I ended up with it. Uh, Bermuda race, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, whatever, but Folio games so many folio games. Oh my gosh Got the freaking bard's tale Freaking bard's tale I mean just look at that These are so cool. Um, there's plenty of other videos and documentation about these but these are just so neat I mean, uh, I mean, I love records and stuff. I just love the packaging, and these are just so classy. Like, it just feels like a miniature record, but it's a game. And then not only that, we've got the Bard's Tale 2. <laughs> and for some reason, I actually have a, two copies of it, but this one doesn't have everything in it, so I don't know. But, yeah. Just look at it. Look at it. This is awesome. Then we've got Lords of Conquest by Eon Software. I love how they have these photos of the developers. Oh gosh, those mustaches. Strong. Yeah, another strategy game. There's a there's a theme here. 
I got this, uh, which I've not fired up yet. Accolades Comics. Oh, oh wow. Uh, I don't know if this is a game or just some sort of... I don't know. What do we got here? Okay, it is a game. It's just comic themed. I don't know. This is this is definitely gonna be a video. Jesus Christ. It's too interesting not to to me anyway. And we've got this, which is just I don't know, some sort of productivity software, but whatever. The fact that it comes in this though is so cool. Yeah. This looks badass as hell. Earth Orbit Stations. I mean, look at this artwork. This definitely looks like a prog rock album. Oh my gosh. I love these little backstory things. The photos, the little blurbs about the creators. It's cool. Now this is a strategy game I think I could get down with. <laughs> yes, they did not just release games with these. This is a financial cookbook. And, uh, yeah. But again, even if it's something completely mundane, the fact that it's in one of these is so cool. Even this has kind of neat artwork. I mean, this is interesting illustration of uh, money exploding out of a pie. Instant music. Oh, this is for 2GS. I don't have that much uh, 2GS specific software, so I'm definitely going to have to... And there's no disc. <laughs> well, that's fine. Actually, uh, I bet I know where the disc is. Um, but yeah, here's some uh, music software. Oh, yeah. This, uh, this kind of thing, I have a few music programs for the 2GS, and they are very much in line with a longer term project I'm working on, which will at some point in the future be a large video. Considering my background in music and music production and audio engineering and all that kind of crap, I've got a big plan for stuff like that. Julius Irving and Larry Bird, one-on-one. -on -one. Hmm. This looks like it might be fun. Ooh, Lucasfilm Games. <laughs> PHM Pegasus, Patrol Hydrofoil Missile Craft Simulation. Interesting. Oh, this does look cool. Gosh. 1987. Okay. And we got a music construction set. Sweet, this has a disc. I mean, it's not for the 2GS, but still. Actually, this looks cool. I love old music software. Like, ugh. I love old music software. New, old, whatever. Give it, give it all to me. You may be an unheralded musical genius. Gosh, finally. Thank you. Thank you, Electronic Arts. I've been telling people for years. And then this one I was playing earlier. I did say I had the physical copy of it, and here she is. This artwork is, oh, it's just awesome. I mean, look at this inside. Got some comic vibes here. And, and the game is just cool. I mean, I did a shit job playing it earlier, but this game is awesome. Yeah, I definitely need to uh, hook it up to a color display and play it, because, uh, I mean, yeah, those screenshots... I mean, there are a lot of games that I don't mind playing on a monochrome display, but this is not one of them. So, we've got another Lucasfilms game. Strike Fleet, the Naval Task Force Simulator. This one looks pretty cool. 
Yeah, I got the disc. And then finally, Chuck Yeager's Advanced Flight Trainer. This does look super cool. Definitely giving this a shot. That's it for uh, boxed games, but these aren't my only games in general. I've got a bunch of floppy disk holders with loose disks. Like here's that Sky Fox copy, as well as a baseball game I was playing earlier. And Jack, we've got just just games, just, just some games. <laughs> and uh, Zork Two, Zork Three, Zork One. A few of these like compilation things. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of stuff. Uh, this isn't all of them, but I've got tons of these holders. And yeah. And we have parts. Parts, parts, and more parts. Uh, yeah, a couple boxes of just extra goodies. Let me get the shaky cam going and let's take a look. So this just has a couple of uh, floppy disk controllers. And the rest of this box is all just numeric keypads and stuff. This is a bunch of cables, stuff like that. Mostly uh, floppy disk cables and whatnot. Then here I've got floppy drives. Um, I made sure to stack these carefully so the cables aren't getting crunched. But yeah, disk two, below that a few three and a half inch drives. Got this here. Oh, this is heavy. We got two of the duo disc drives. Those are cool. Moving on over here. This box just has a selection of things. Like I've got, and no, I didn't pack this. Uh, and I don't have enough anti-static bags for all of them yet. This has no markings on it. It's a mystery yet to be solved. Language card. DOS 3.2 ROMs. This is another one of those fingerprint interfaces. The screen dump utility. It's not the box to the one that's in my 2GS. It's actually another one. So, yeah, that's cool. And then a bunch of... Got a couple of, like... 80 column cards, a bunch of RAM modules and ROM chips. And then we've got this big boy, the RAM Factor. Another one of those. Up to one meg of memory expansion. Ooh. Compatible with 2 Plus, 2E, and 2GS. And yeah, moving back over here. And here I've just got a selection of uh, various input devices, ADB keyboards. Mice, little cheese block mouse, joysticks, a few koala pads, just stuff like that. And this box I try and keep pretty close because got a bunch of joysticks in here and I don't know, they work to varying degrees. But yeah, then for here, mostly like power cables and stuff like that, power supplies. But this is actually really clever. The guy who gave me the stuff, he gave me this, and basically it's like a security camera monitor, but on the back it has composite inputs, and it totally works with the Apple IIs, um, and it shows color. So it's just like nice and compact, powered by this teeny little power supply. And I see these things on Amazon, they're not expensive, so if you don't want a CRT or want color, whatever, uh, this is actually uh, not a bad option. So. That's really cool. And then this box over here. Prop this up. Some more ah, space to set things. I've got a bunch of the more modern parts and accessories you can get. Like this box has a couple of the uh, ooh, don't fall out. The uh, vid HD HDMI interface. Um, yeah, that's super handy. 
definitely gonna try that out soon. Um, this is a this guy with the plastic case and the very satisfying clicky switches is apparently a game port to Apple II interface. Haven't tested that out yet. Apple IIc VGA. I was warned that this didn't work that great. This particular one. I don't know about the product as a whole, but yeah, it's wrapped in foil. Oh. ADB to USB card. And then some CDs, documentation for stuff like the fast chip and just all that sort of thing. But yeah should keep me occupied for quite a while. I'm excited to try out different combinations of expansion options. Uh, especially, God, I've got like two or three of those uh, vid HD things by Blue Shift, and that's obviously super handy. And those things are not cheap. So, yeah, I'm sure at some point I'll just put them in pretty much everything. But, yeah, there's these. Oh boy. Sorry, my garage is a mess. I've got this all stacked up between two base amp heads. They're much old fishing rods, but... So what we're looking at is mostly, uh... Books. Books, 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 and more books. Just all the books. If there is any book about the Apple II, I probably have it. Just all sorts of stuff. Um, like, books about Steve Wozniak. Uh programming guides, reference manuals, just all sorts of stuff. I'm not going to dig them out because that will kill my back again. And also, it's hot as balls in this garage. In fact, I don't want to keep any of this in here for too long, especially uh, those, but uh, soon. Got to find more space, but coming over here, yeah, I've got two uh, Apple ImageWriter 2 printers, and apparently they both work, I've been told. Have not tried it out for myself yet, but yeah, I've got this, this one in the box, box of paper for it, somewhere I've got some ink ribbons, and yeah, so that's cool. Um, but more noteworthy to me is I've just got floppies on floppies. Just so many boxes like this, just stuffed full of loose floppy disks. Um, this isn't even all of them. I've Got a few more boxes of this elsewhere, filled with just all sorts of different types of software. You know, word processors, spreadsheet stuff, whatever. Uh, one of my favorites I've found, which I've got somewhere inside, but Will Writer 2.0, so I can get my will together finally. Um, I actually do have a copy of that that has the lady's uh, information on the disc. <laughs> Like, all her her personal information and her will and everything from, like, the 1980s. So, that's uh, strange. But, you know, that's, uh, that's what happens when you end up with a bunch of uh, old computer stuff. But, yeah. Just so many of these. I need to organize them. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this is the, uh, the mess that I need to move soonish. But, yeah. Pretty neat. Some of the more interesting books I already took inside, like some of the history books and, I don't know, more interesting manuals, I guess. But, yeah, you yeah, know, it's cool. Hey, so, just some final rambling thoughts, I guess. Uh, <laughs> this video was a lot. Um, this experience has been a lot. Um, even just like making this video, everything, everything's just been so overwhelming <laughs> on a lot of different levels. Uh, making this video for one thing, like, I'm not some like master cinematographer, but, you know, I try and maintain a certain level of, uh, I don't know, production quality, I guess. But for this one, there's just so much to cover, and I knew it was going to be absurdly long, so I was like, all right, I... I I gotta dig through boxes and stuff. I don't want to have a gigantic camera in my face and wire up mics and stuff. So it's just like, yeah, I'm putting a phone on a tripod and hoping for the best. So, 
and didn't write a script or anything. So that I probably made more work for myself doing that, having to edit out a lot of uh or and yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, even beyond that, this has just been such an overwhelming experience. Just so much to take in, uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> When I got this stuff, I did not have room for it. I severely underestimated just how much it would be. Uh, this entire room was in disarray for like weeks with just stuff everywhere. And yeah, uh, and even beyond that, just like, you know, I didn't grow up with this stuff. I'm not quite that old. And yeah, I grew up with the, uh, like the Performa Series Max and like the Beige G3 Power Max, like in school and whatnot. And then later the G3 IMAX, you know, the colorful ones and whatnot. And, and then at home I had like Windows PCs from like Windows 95 and onwards. So a bit of a learning curve, you know, just learning out how to use the damn things. <laughs> so, but it's been cool. Like I, I'm in love with it. Um, this is so neat. There's just so much cool stuff. I've barely scratched the surface. Still plenty of things where I don't know what the hell they do. Uh, I've tried to be very open and transparent about that. Like, I do not claim to be an expert whatsoever. Um, there are plenty of times uh, while I was, like, going through and editing this video where I was like, ooh, that was wrong. And I tried to either annotate it or poke a little fun at myself about it. Um, and when I did a deep dive on something, I'd try and, you know, do some research beforehand and, you know, whatever. But... Yeah, there's just so much to learn and so much to just enjoy. Like, this is just, this is fun. Like, this is, I live for this. Um, it's just, it's so cool. And, yeah, I'm, I'm sure some people are going to be like, oh, you got like a gajillion dollars worth of stuff for free. I'm like, it's not about that. I mean, yeah, it's cool. Like, I do, I do have a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't have access to normally. I mean, some of this stuff's expensive, and this has been such a such a great blessing. And uh, you know, it's it's not really about the, the dollar amount of this or that or the other things. I'm actually pointing to things in the room. There are Apple II's all outside the frame here, but no, it's just it's worth so much more to me as someone who truly just enjoys this stuff and is having the time of his life with it. And it's just, it's cool. Man, computers are so awesome. And I'm not a daily Mac user. Um, you know, I, uh, I don't choose like Windows or Mac, like one side over the other, but I, I don't use them on a day-to-day -day basis, but I like some of their stuff. But even still, uh, as someone who's not like the biggest, like, you know, Apple enthusiast, this is just so cool to own, like, <laughs> This is such an important machine, and there's just so much stuff you can do with it that's kind of overwhelming. Like, this is so much more than just a, a games machine. I mean, that is the primary reason I want it. Like, I, that's my thing. But, you know, stuff like that uh, senior prom thing, uh, breaking copy protection, and accessing, like, the system monitor, and it's all sorts of things. Just, it's so cool, and I love it. And uh, I don't think I have much more to say than that. I'm having fun, and it's awesome. Computers are tight, and you can quote me on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't write a script for this either, but uh, not much more. Not much more to say other than uh, oh yeah. Uh, if anyone saw anything in this video that they desperately want to see covered, um, reach me. I'm easy to reach. Uh, send me an email or a message or whatever and you know I've got a few different things going on at any given time and this stuff will be revisited in their own videos of course um, for sure I've actually got a few projects in the works that I'm really excited for but if there's anything like you really want to see some game or a piece of hardware or whatever uh, let me know and I'll move it to the front of the queue as it were so yeah if you like this kind of thing you want to see more of me tinkering with my, my cool stuff and my not so cool stuff, just all my crap, uh, you know what to do. It's YouTube. 
you, you hit the button or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything more to say and I'm rambling at this point. So I'm going to call this video. It is like 5 in the morning and <laughs> I'm trying to finish this up. So yeah, if you made it this far, thanks for watching and have a good one, I guess. Thanks. <laughs> Profound. <laughs>